Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well on uh, the 1st of February. We survived January. Well done. <laughs> it's been a long month, I'm sure, but uh, a lot more sunshine, hopefully coming your way and longer nights and brighter mornings. So um, hopefully we're on the turn of the year at this point now. Um, this morning, we've got Patrice Lawrence back with our fantastic right here, right now, writing challenge. But I'm just here to let you know about some of the events coming up this week and some of the events next week with Patrice. Later on tonight at six o'clock, we have the Block Social, all about what can you get away with in children's writing and writing for young adults. Should kids and young people be kept secret away from issues such as racism or war or poverty? And then on the 4th of February at six o'clock, we have an Enterprise Hub, all about diversity in children's, uh, in the children's writing and children's publishing, which I think is a very important discussion that we need to have. Next week, we have the um, the workshop on the 9th of February at six o'clock. And then as always, we have the open house on the 11th of February at six o'clock. So bring your work to the session and we can share it around and get some feedback for you. And um, you can feedback on other people's work. I think it's always really important to learn to listen properly. Um, I think you can learn a lot about your own work um, in doing that. And then on the 12th, we've got the block party where Patrice will be reading her creative response to the residency. And we'll be hearing from some of you guys as well about your, the, your work that you've developed throughout the three, week, three weeks. So this is the start of the second week of Patrice's residency. So don't miss out. You can check out the in conversation that we had with Patrice on our YouTube channel um, and do sign up for some of of the upcoming workshops and block socials. But for now, I'll hand you over to Patrice to deliver it this morning's right here, right now, right in front. Take care. Good morning, everybody. And so happy February, if such a thing exists. Um, so apologies for arranging my camera like that. So, um, when I did my, my sort of first prompt with you, I talked about a fantastic exercise from the um, poet Caroline Burr to take away the mystique of writing because sometimes we're made to think that writing is this tormented beast that we must have pain to fight and to deliver our, our, our sort of our opus but actually writing is us it's our voice is what we we commit down and there is no mystery about it so she introduced this exercise where we describe writing in a sentence. Writing is like, and it can be absolutely anything. So the one that I had was writing is like a tapeworm. And I thought, yes, because it's kind of, the story is curled up inside you, it hurts to process. When it finally pushes itself out, you kind of miss it. So I want you to do one, 90 seconds. And I want yours is, writing is like a glass of fizzy drink because. 90 seconds, go. Sixty seconds left, and honestly, just just whatever spills out on the paper is absolutely fine. And I always say, no one cares about your spelling um, if your sentences are joined up. This isn't school. This is just you and your voice and however you express yourself. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent, thank you. Right, the next exercise is really about my very favorite thing in the world. Well, that and music and Black Panther. It's food. I grew up in a household with a um, Trinidadian mum and an Italian stepdad. And weirdly enough, my stepdad actually 
came to England and worked as a kitchen porter in hotels in the south of England. So I grew up eating rather than sort of pasta, a lot of Black Forest gatto and um, prawn cocktail. So I want to think about food and memory. I'm going to hopefully share a picture with you. Right, so food and memory. Now, just before Christmas, uh, it suddenly sort of dawned on me that I wouldn't be able to spend it with my daughter in London and I'd be um, on Christmas Day by myself. So I went out and I did some shopping. So three food items here, all with particular memories for me. So one, Alfonso mangoes. I was so happy to get those Alfonso mangoes. Um, Mangoes always remind me of the first time I went to Trinidad when I was uh, six. And Alfonso mangoes are particularly fragrant. So also they make me think of boxes of them outside grocers in London. Um, that texture of sort of peeling back the mango, you know, whether they're ones that are slightly stringy or very fragrant or soft or a bit crunchy. Um, mangoes are my sort of go-to fruit. Panettone, panettone for me is Christmas, Christmas is in Italy. We used to go to Italy to spend um, Christmas quite often with my Italian family there. So long before they came over to England, I was eating uh, panettone. So that kind of reminds me of teen and, ch and childhood in, in Italy, but also very much the joy of suddenly finding you can get panettone in Marks and Spencers. And mince pies. I'm not even sure if I particularly like mince pies, but there's that memory of making them when you were a kid, you know, putting a pastry in and flumping a whole load of mince in there. And there's something about mince pies that makes you think it's Christmas, um, whether you like them or not. So I want the first the first thing I want you to do is I'm going to give you uh, two minutes just to have a think and write down three food items that are part of your memory for whatever reason. So three food items that are part of your memory. So two minutes starting now. And as usual, don't have don't go, you have to think too hard about it because there's no wrong or right answers. But I think taste is one of those senses that feels it's got such a, a sort of sharp connection to our memories. And whether they're good or bad, there's certain things that we often don't eat or drink or can't taste for certain reasons because the memories about them are so strong. So think about those three three items or three food things. Just one more minute, just have a think if you haven't got anything. Scribble something on paper. Just 30 seconds. Excellent. So now you should have your three food items. Um, I don't know whether they're food that you love or food that you don't like or food with different memories. So depending on which food items you've chosen, you, you can decide which one you use for the following exercises. So we're going to do three exercises each of seven minutes. So the first food item is going to be something that you really love. And in the same way, I could spend a whole day love, sort of describing lovingly why I love mangoes. I want you to um, 
just write for seven minutes about that particular item of food that you love. Just think about its texture, its smell, the moment that you're eating it, how you eat it. And if you want the memory that it relates to, so write seven minutes about this amazing food item that you absolutely adore and why. And just think of the senses as well, even the sound of it when you eat it, um, the colours of it, the different colours. So for mangoes, look at the sort of blush on the front of the skin, the smoothness, the way the light shines off, the sort of bright orange when you peel back the skin. So seven minutes. And I've just reset my timer. Seven minutes starting now about that. The joy of eating that particular food item. Got four and a half minutes to go. Right, you're halfway through. So just a reminder, think of the textures, the smells, but also the memories associated with why, why this item, what does it mean to you?
good two and a half minutes left. Ninety seconds. A minute. It doesn't matter if you don't finish, it just means you've got some loads of ideas. That's absolutely fine. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. Three, two, one. Excellent. So now you've got your amazing sort of food, but something awful has happened. This amazing food that you like, everything has changed. So you can use the one that you've just written about, or you can use another one on your list. Something that you loved before now turns to ashes every time you eat it. Well, not literal ashes, but you don't like it anymore. What happened? What changed? So the things that you loved about this item, whether it was its texture, so the mango what used to be soft and juicy, just now feels like snail slime. I can't deal with all the stringy bits that keep getting stuck on my, my teeth. It makes my lips go all sort of sticky and you spend ages taking it off. Um, the smell that was so fragrant now gets clogged in my nose and, and feels like sort of really that mixture of random perfumes whenever you go into a sort of department store. So it's the opposite now, that fruit that you love, or that item, that food item that you love, it's now the absolute opposite. So seven minutes, right, the opposite, why this food is not good. And if you want as well, you've got time, you can make up a story to explain what changed. This food is no longer good. It tastes like this because something happened and, and it's this. Or you might just write a description of it. Whatever suits you, go for it. Seven minutes now.
five minutes left. <laughs> Two and a half minutes left. Sixty seconds. Thirty. Two, one. So 
the last exercise, which I'm going to leave with you with, because we're sort of out of time now, and you can time yourself, I would say seven minutes is a good time for an exercise. So take what you've written, look at them. You've got three food items, two pieces of writing. And the last you could use either of the pieces, um, develop either of the pieces you've already written, or start with another food item. And you have to absolutely convince somebody who hates that food that it is good to eat. Something really important depends on it. It is vital that you do. So you need to sell the deliciousness of that food item to somebody who holds something really powerful and that could change your life. So if you have to lie to do it, if you rub the mango skin on your face, it brings out the glow in your collection, in your complexion, anything. It could be as absurd as you like, but just do a complete idea dump, make it fun, make it stupid, but underneath you know it's important that you've got to convince that other person that that food is the most delicious that they've ever tasted. So hopefully that was good fun. Hopefully it stimulated your appetite for both food and for writing. Um, thank you very much and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Patrice. I'm absolutely starving now after all that writing about food. <laughs> I'm going to have to get find some mince pies to chuck to scoff down. I don't know if we'll get any now in February. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Please do send in your writing exercises from today and from any other day that you've done right here right now. So you can email them to us at info at writingonthewall.org.uk where you can post it on your own social media and tag us in your posts and stories. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the block later on during the week. Take care.